Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our third uh, episode of Megaphone 2021 uh, webinar series, Activists Winning the Attention Game, uh, that we're organizing this year with the Hive Mind platform. Uh, my name is Maya. Uh, I work for TechSoup Europe. I'm based in Warsaw, uh, and I will serve as your facilitator for today. Uh, with us also on the chat and in the background is Anna Guiverda, who's our amazing uh, educational coach for a lot of our activities. Uh, with us also in the backstage are Kasia and Michal, our amazing comms team, who are monitoring our social media. Also our Facebook live stream, because we're also uh, present there. Super br briefly from me, what is Megaphone? Uh, Megaphone is an uh, annual event. We're organizing a sex of Europe. It's dedicated to activists from Central and Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Uh, the idea is that uh, we want to help activists understand how they can use technology uh, in their daily work, how technology can help do their daily work better. Uh, but also how to produce how to produce their stories, how to get them across to different social media channels to a wider audience, how to get more followers to the causes we're, uh, we're supporting. And the idea for webinars was born from the fact that a Megaphone was also an, a, always a closed event. And uh, given how amazing, like what amazing experts we had and what uh, expertise and knowledge they had to share, we decided it would be amazing to spread it around to a wider group. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the idea for Megaphone Webinar Series was born. Um, and speaking of amazing experts with uh, expertise and knowledge to share, we're joined today by Cassie Cho, who um, similarly to Val Wojcicka from last week, uh, has worked for Amnesty International. She's an, uh, currently she's an independent journalist. Um, and Cassie will take us through some practical tips and tricks on how to create a video for our social media, um, uh, how to create visual content um, for our visual storytelling. Um, and as always, we invite you to uh, uh, our next uh, two episodes because we only have two more episodes left in this webinar series. So next Thursday and the Thursday after that, uh, follow all our social media for uh, uh, details on that, as well as an email that you'll receive tomorrow. Uh, Last thing from me, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, our webinar, after I finally <laughs> shut up, will take about 40 minutes of Cassie's presentation, and then we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, doubts during Cassie's presentation, please put them, uh, put them in chat uh, um, in real time. We will either ask them right away or we'll gather them and ask them at the, at the end of the presentation. Uh, the same goes to uh, people watching us through Facebook Live. Please put your comments uh, there and we'll be copy and paste, pasting them. Um, at this point, you're all pros at Zoom, but just uh, <laughs> for, uh, for order, uh, you are all muted. Uh, you will stay muted, uh, but we warmly invite you to get in touch with us through chat. Um, and uh, I know this is a often a question, a question that you ask. Uh, we are recording this. You will get the link to, uh, to the recording in the email uh, that will come uh, for the registered participants tomorrow and alongside link to Cassie's presentation because that will also be uh, available. So now uh, I promise I won't say anything more. Time for our amazing webinar leader for today. Cassie, take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I am Cassie. I'm very happy to be here to be doing this uh, webinar today. Um, so just a quick introduction about myself. I am an independent journalist and also an audience strategist. So I previously worked with BuzzFeed News and also at Bloomberg. Um, and now I am uh, the founder of my own company. And also I am working as an audience strategist uh, for a lot of nonprofits and human rights organizations, such as Amnesty International, WaterAid, um, and also uh, Human Rights Watch. And so um, I am also, oh, 
like not working, um, the founder and editor in chief of almost.co, which is, uh, uh, which you can find on Instagram. Um, it is basically a Instagram first media outlet um, aimed at informing young people about, you know, world news stories. Um, so I like to think of it as humans of the world meets Teen Vogue. Um, so the goal is twofold. The first one is to inform young people and in particular young women about important issues that are going on around the world. Um, and then to also reflect the diverse and young audience by highlighting the underreported community and minorities um, and the voices that, you know, and their experiences from around the world. Um, so today we are going to be talking about making videos for social media, um, sort of with a focus on kind of news and kind of activist uh, kind of styles of content. So here are just two examples of the types of videos that we'll be talking about. Um, and I'll kind of show you, uh, the, this is from um, BuzzFeed and also from Bloomberg, just to show you kind of the types of videos we'll be talking about, kind of the principles and how to, um, how we can make these videos ourselves. What are some things you've always wanted to know about Ramadan but have had no one to ask? You can ask me things like, why are people fast, fasting times, customs and practices, or anything you wanted to know. Just leave a question down below and I'll get back to you. So this is a video that um, I made at BuzzFeed uh, when I was running the BuzzFeed at World Instagram. And basically around the month of Ramadan, we wanted to see how we could interact with our audience and to really get them um, engaged and kind of to understand more about the month of Ramadan and what that means. Um, so we did a QA. and a um, And then on the right here, we have um, a story that I did for Bloomberg Quick Take, which is Bloomberg's uh, social news video platform aimed at the next generation of Bloomberg audiences. Um, and this one is, uh, I was in Taiwan when and, um, for the elections uh, earlier last year. And then I basically, after uh, Tsai Ing-wen won at the election again, I basically did a Q&A story again, also to um, for audiences to kind of ask questions about the elections and find out more about what had happened. And this is just one of the first slides from that. Hi there, I'm Cassie Cho. I'm a journalist with Bloomberg Quick Take. I'm here in Taipei to cover the Taiwan presidential elections, where President Tsai Ing-wen was just re-elected in a landslide victory over opposition candidate Han Guoyu. Awesome. So, uh, the first question is why should we use video for news or for activism or just in general on social media? Um, so the answers are quite simple. Habits are changing. Um, no one's really kind of pulling up a computer anymore and being like going to their browser and typing in, like, I don't know, newyorktimes.com and then like reading articles online. People are increasingly spending their time on their phones on apps like Instagram and TikTok, which focuses uh, are very visual platforms that focus a lot on video. Um, and also it helps to reach younger and wider audiences because because, you know, as young people increasingly move towards these platforms and don't really necessarily want to move back towards, you know, browsers, uh, for example, and would rather spend their time, you know, reading something within Instagram, for example, we should really be, it's our job to be delivering the news and information that, you know, to our audiences, wherever they are in ways that make sense to them and also kind of feel natural for the platforms. So here are just two more examples of the types of videos that you can be using to um, tell news stories or just um, stories about human rights. So the first one, is a video I made for the BuzzFeed at World Instagram, which is more of like a news style video. Um, and then the second one is a reel that I made for Amnesty on International Women's Day this year. <laughs> video is a totally different way of telling stories and allows people to kind of in, engage on more levels beyond just seeing text, for example. Um, it is also a really, I guess, like a bite-sized way, a quick way for people to consume information, especially if they're on the go and on their phones. So here's just, uh, this video is just, I believe, 30 seconds. Here are eight women's rights wins to celebrate this International Women's Day. 
Argentina finally legalized abortion. Sudan abolished female genital mutilation, or FGM. Denmark passed a law clearly defining rape as sex without consent. Sierra Leone stopped banning pregnant girls from going to school. The UK abolished tampon tax and Scotland made period products free for all. Abortion is no longer illegal in South Korea. Saudi women's rights activist Sue Jane was freed from prison. And Costa Rica became the first Central American country to legalize same-sex marriage. So as you can see, this allows audiences to be able to see eight women's rights wins in just 30 seconds. And you know, you can see the photos and videos to accompany it as well. So um, I always like to show this video whenever I teach a video class because a lot of people are very confused about, you know, what is a social video? What is a social news video? What is, what, what, how, how difficult is it to kind of make a video about news? It must be very complicated. You need like cameras and proper photo shoots and stuff. But I really like to show this because it, this was something that we, when I was at BuzzFeed, we just kind of went out and shot this video on a whim. And then it ended up doing really, really well on Facebook. And so I think it really demonstrates um, just how wide of like a variety of content um, um, you can make when it comes to video. This is the supreme brick. <laughs> it's bubble wrap. And what? To spend this much money on a singular brick is going to be really, really interesting for me. I'm breaking the seal on my supreme brick. Okay, here we go. So yeah, it's uh, it's a brick. It says supreme, and I paid thirty pounds for it. Okay, I'll be very honest. This is a pretty nice brick. Like it's pretty cool. It's smooth. I'm like slowly getting it. Like it's like the idea that I. No, this is stupid. It's a brick. I get it. It's a nice brick. It's a good brick. So I really like to share this video in general because I think it illustrates um, some one of the ideas that I hope you can take away from this session. Sorry, there seems to be a fire truck outside, but um, I hope that you know this was basically the idea behind this video was um, we were seeing online that a lot of Supreme was selling this brick and there was like it was being sold for 30 pounds and you know people were were losing their minds over it and so we were like oh we should really do something about this but I don't know what to do and so we saw that there was um, we knew that there was the Supreme shop just down the road in London um, where the BuzzFeed UK office was and so we were like oh maybe we should go and interview some people there and so we went um, with our phones and video cameras and then and we tried to interview a few people, but they weren't really, uh, they, they weren't there for the brick. And so we were like, oh, but we really should do something. So I basically was like, why don't we try and buy a brick ourselves? And that was just something that we randomly came up with. And then we're like, okay, let's do it. And so we just went through this experience of buying this brick. And then um, actually they wouldn't let us film inside, which is why you couldn't see the inside of the store. But then we kind of did an interview with the reporter who bought it. And then we like shot the footage and then we put it all together. And then we um, put it on Facebook and we, and all the other channels and we were like, oh, we don't know how it's going to do, but let's just like see how it does. And then it did really well. And so I think it illustrates that, you know, content doesn't necessarily, I mean, I guess like news and activist content doesn't necessarily have to be super serious, even if it is, I mean, obviously if it's about a super serious topic, then yes, but you can have a lot of fun with it and you can really, really experiment and try out different things. Um, and video as a medium really allows you to do that. So first of all, during this workshop, I want to go through some principles of good social storytelling in general. So um, just kind of some guiding kind of ideas to help you when you are thinking about making a video. So the first one is to show, don't tell, which uh, is a classic, but I think it's super important. So um, I've put two examples here to kind of illustrate that. So in, so on the left here, we have, uh, so this is during the Christchurch terrorist attack. Um, so a lot of places kind of just did a, uh, 
uh, a post on Instagram, for example, saying New Zealand's prime minister has said she will never say the Christchurch terrorist's name with a generic photo of Jacinda. So that's fine. Um, but it says it's kind of unclear as like an audience member to or like a viewer on the platform to it's not really clear where and where this when this photo was taken and what she's actually saying at that exact moment. And if you have video of that moment, why don't you instead of telling um, the audience that she said this, why don't we show her actually saying this? So on the right here, we have the video of her actually saying it. And so it I think it adds another layer to kind of the story because you kind of get a bit more context as to, you know, that you can kind of hear her voice, you can hear her tone and like you can hear kind of the context around her speech. And I think that makes it a lot more powerful. So we're going to watch this video right now. The 15th of March will now be forever a day etched in our collective memories. On a quiet Friday afternoon, a man stormed into a place of peaceful worship and took away the lives of 50 people. That quiet Friday afternoon has become our darkest of days. He sought many things from his act of terror, but one was notoriety. And that is why you will never hear me mention his name. He is a terrorist. He is a criminal. He is an extremist. But he will, when I speak, be nameless. And to others, I implore you, speak the names of those who were lost rather than the name of the man who took them. He may have sought notoriety, but we in New Zealand will give him nothing, not even his name. So I think uh, in general, this this idea is kind of the guiding principle you should have when it comes to videos. So if you can show directly, illustrate directly that thing happening, show it. Um, so if you have clips of it, if it, if the news article or the human rights abuse is literally based on a, a leader saying something, then you should use video of it, show them saying it. Um, so the next thing yes, is so sorry, on there's a, there's a oh, question. Sorry. No, 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 sorry, yes. because there's a question from Alida who I think yes. uh, we've also had this uh, during the previous workshop, who asks, what if you can't get copyrights for the video? Yeah, I think that is definitely an issue. Um, so there are definitely ways around that. So you can probably, you can reach out for permission a lot of times. Um, and a lot of times I've reached out not thinking that people would get back to me, um, but they do. And so it, it doesn't hurt to just email them and say, hey, I am a reporter or I am, you know, a journalist or an activist working on this. I really like to share your video um, with your permission when with credit, would that be possible? Um, if it's a public figure in general, you can take uh, their content as long as you attribute them. Um, so I think this is kind of like, I don't really want to go too deep into this because this is like user generated content is essentially like a whole other workshop in itself. But um, I would definitely say reach out if you can. And then um, I think the rules are a bit looser in terms of um, public figures like celebrities and also politicians. Hope that answers your question. Um, shall I continue? Go on. Okay, cool. So the next uh, kind of uh, principle is to focus on people. Uh, so it's really hard to connect with like or understand the gravity of a big news event when it doesn't necessarily relate to you or directly affect you or anybody you know. But um, as humans, we are empathetic people. And so showing someone who has been affected helps to create an emotional connection and triggers that empathetic response where it's like, oh, for example, uh, a really kind of an earthquake happened somewhere uh, really far away from you. And so it's just like, okay, that doesn't really affect me. It doesn't matter. I can still go about my daily life. But if you're able to see someone who has, who's perhaps lost their home or lost a relative in, in the earthquake, then you can tell that, oh, then you, you can see like, oh, wow. Okay. Somebody was actually affected by this. And so that helps to register kind of for you, like what that means and how that could affect other people, because it's seeing another person, people relate to people. And so seeing that person really helps to make it really easy for a, uh, for you to kind of understand a big concept, especially when it's something really kind of in, like an invisible notion of like Brexit or something, for example. Or I, I guess like freedom of speech as well is a good example when it comes to uh, human rights. And then, um, so with kind of 
a rise in uh, vertical videos, such as in TikTok and also in Reels and also in Stories, which we've seen in IGTV. Um, so focusing on original and authentic content is really, really helpful um, because you know people don't like to, people audiences online don't really like to see content that feels like too polished or too perfect because then it feels like an ad. Unless it's like on YouTube when people are sort of hoping to go there for high quality content that's like a mini documentary or like a documentary style. Um, um, versus like on platforms that are sort of with shorter form video, it's really cool to kind of make content that's more authentic and I guess like lo-fi. Um, so it doesn't really feel like it's an ad and it's too polished and impersonal. And so um, you can actually use vertical video for a lot of stuff like on the ground videos and photos. Like uh, as you can see, when the Trump baby was in London, um, I went over and then just shot some videos and also photos um, of you know people looking at the Trump baby and also the protest that was going on when Trump was visiting London. Um, and then it's also really good for like any kind of behind the scenes stuff um, for reporting, interviews, or shoots, and so on. So here's an example of a behind the scenes story that we made during the royal wedding um, in London, where we were promoting, basically, we were doing a show around the royal wedding. And then the hosts basically did a very cute uh, video about to tease the, um, to tease the, the show. Hi, I'm Rachel, I'm Rose, and we're hosting BuzzFeed's live royal wedding show. Uh, we'll be on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. So tune in, because we will be here for three hours of the coverage, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. And we have corgis. We have corgis. So it feels a lot more personal when you're able to see someone and it's like, oh, it's almost like it's my friend talking to me and telling me to tune in on this show. It doesn't feel like a big news organization is telling me to watch something very, very important kind of thing, even though it is important. But I think being able to kind of create like a personal and relatable kind of connection really, really helps to engage uh, audiences. So um, now that we've kind of gone through some of the guiding principles, now it's time to create your own social video, which I know can be very daunting. Um, and so the first thing we should talk about is your setup. And so uh, does your setup need to look as complicated as the setup I have on the left here with the giant camera and everything? The answer is no, it doesn't. Um, you can also film stuff using just your phone here on the right. You can see me on the back of a truck, uh, a float truck, I guess, in um, at Pride in Taiwan earlier this year uh, for Amnesty international and using my tiny iPhone SE to film some fo uh, video footage for, um, for some social videos. So yeah, all you really need is your phone. Um, so something that can film at 1080p at 30 FPS, you can check by going into the settings on your phone. Um, I think this is anything from like an iPhone 5S upwards in terms of iPhones. Um, I was using my iPhone SE for like four years to film videos. Um, that, that's the first generation one, the tiny one. Um, and then if you are looking for a camera, a Canon 70D is pretty standard. Um, so other things that you, uh, can help when you're going out on the ground and you're kind of filming videos is earphones um, because of the sound quality, which we will talk a bit about later. Um, another light source, especially in, if you're in low lighting uh, situations. Um, and then also a selfie stick just to help with like stabilizing and also your arms get really sore. So when it comes to making your uh, video, the first, uh, there's kind of a process that you should follow. So um, the first, and we'll talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail. So the first one is to script. Um, and then you film your footage and then you gather B-roll, which is kind of, I guess, like alternate or a video to substitute for the main video to so that people don't get bored of just looking at you talk for the whole time. Um, and then you edit and put everything together. So the first step is when you script. So when you're scripting, um, we want to follow the inverted pyramid, which is basically starting with the most newsworthy information. So basically, this, tell them the story immediately. So tell people the who, the what, the when, the where, why, and then the how. So it's because people's attentions are really, really short. And you know, if the video doesn't necessarily go straight into it, they're probably just going to keep scrolling because there is so much content out there. They don't necessarily want to waste that 30 seconds waiting for you to get to the point of the video when they can just keep scrolling and see it somewhere else. And so you want to just tell them the story straight away. And then you can start adding more details and general information about the event or the thing that you're reporting on. And then you can then later on, you can put in all the other stuff like background information, context that you need to know in order to um, understand the story better on a deeper level. But just make sure that you always lead with the story or the money shot or um, whatever the story is about. Um, so 
the less text so when scripting the less text you can have the better because people are very visual and you know walls of text can really really put people off because it's like oh gosh now i have to read a whole thing and so one of the benefits of video is that you can use other elements like images and like videos to um, prevent people from having to read so much text so when you're scripting try to think of each point um, or a slide if you're doing like a story um, as a bullet point or like a paragraph so just one point in um, a sentence for example and then to make sure that you write in short simple and conversational sentences um, and then think about how you would tell the story to a friend instead of writing in kind of, um, I think journalists, for example, and also I think um, working in human rights organizations, nonprofits in general have um, a tendency to, especially for like web content, tend to write it in um, words that people wouldn't, in a way that people wouldn't necessarily speak, where it's very like, you know, headline style or like legalese. And so it's really thinking about how you would, if you were to tell this story to your friend, how would you tell them about it? And so here are just two examples of um, kind of thinking about how you would script and how you would say it to a friend. And obviously like it, it's quite complicated when there are a lot of facts involved, but I think there are still ways that you can do it. Try and like make it as simple and straightforward as possible. And so on the left here is um, a slide that uh, was from my story series for the BuzzFeed at World Instagram where Cold Woman Crush Wednesday, um, where I highlighted badass women who were making headlines around the world each Wednesday. Um, and so this is just one of the single, oh, sorry, one of the slides. Indian sprinter Duty Chand came out and became the first openly LGBT professional athlete in her country. Her announcement comes less than a year after India struck down a 157 year old law that criminalized gay sex. She said she was in a same-sex relationship with women and that everyone should have the freedom to love. So that's very, very simple, very to the point. It's three sentences, um, tells you everything you need to know about the story. Um, and then here is an IGTV video that I also made for that world Instagram with a reporter in Japan. And so um, kind of pay attention to the way that the script is and the way that, and also her delivery, because obviously you, if you script something that is uh, the way that you would talk to a friend, you wanna make sure that the delivery also feels that way because when people are holding their phones, it becomes a lot more personal when it feels like, oh, here's my friend telling me a story about what's going on in the world. Japan's top medical university has been decreasing the test scores of female applicants so that they can keep a low ratio of women in the university. The university believed it was better to accept more male students than female students because female doctors would end up dropping out of the workforce after getting married or giving birth to children. They believed that more male doctors would solve their doctor shortage in their hospitals. A university official reportedly called it a necessary evil and it is causing outrage. 303 men and 148 women passed the first stage of applications, but they, they ended up accepting only 30 women compared to 141 men. The university automatically deducted a set number of points from interview scores of female applicants. Japan has a history of gender inequality and male candidates are often picked over female candidates. Only 12.4% of legislators, senior officials and managers in Japan are female. People are mad because first, it is 2018. And second, it's not the women's fault that they may have to leave their work, but because of the system that doesn't support them enough. Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm just conscious of time. So I'm going to move on to the next thing. So after you've done your script, uh, you have a rough, at least a rough outline of what your video is going to look like. You can go out and you can film yourself or other people um, and gather footage. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to film yourself. Um, so, and the tips that are required. So make sure you go somewhere bright and quiet. Natural light is always great. So um, if you can do that, please do that. Uh, but make sure that you don't have the light behind you, um, but actually you're facing the light so that you don't become backlit. Um, and then uh, make sure that you hold the phone at eye level uh, because you don't wanna end up with the double chin or if you have bangs, not be able to have people see your eyes. Um, and then if you are somewhere loud or somewhere echoey, it really, really helps to use headphones. Um, if especially, yeah, if there's background noise, uh, even AirPods help a lot. Um, and then just make sure if you're filming yourself, in, especially in selfie style, as uh, we're focusing more on like, I guess, vertical stories in this workshop, um, just make sure you don't zoom in too close um, so that you leave enough room later on to kind of put all the gifts and stuff around it. Uh, so I'm going to play two of the examples of um, selfie style. This The first one is a selfie style video, and then the other one is also kind of a vertical video, but somebody else shooting me. 
Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar, and it's an important month for Muslims as we believe that the Quran, our holy book, was revealed in Ramadan. Cool. So that was uh, the same Ramadan story we were talking about earlier. Um, and then here is a video uh, for Amnesty that I made. Coronavirus is not an Oh, this is the one without um, text. So we shot this video and then we later on added text to it. But as you can see, uh, we've kind of zoomed out quite a bit and then um, tried to hold the phone at eye level that left some space around there. Um, yeah. Mind your language, words can obscure people's humanity and kill stereotypes. Say what you're for. We're for a world where we can live freely and without fear. It's up to us to make that happen. Cool. And then if you have the opportunity to experience something when you're out filming, please do it. Uh, people, it's always really fun to be able to watch someone do something. Again, going back to the show, don't tell things. So if you can experience it, people really, really like that. So here are just two examples of the type of experiential videos that you can shoot, even when it comes to covering kind of uh, a bigger news event, for example. And even like the brick video is an example of experiencing something. So the first one is um, when we went to South Korea uh, for to cover the uh, Winter Olympics. Um, we wanted to do a story about plastic surgery. And so uh, the reporter um, and I went and then she actually went and uh, got a plastic surgery consultation. And this was, you know, her actually experiencing it. That is your phone. <laughs> yeah, that's my phone. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah, but the problem is that you're so it is a little bit, you have to be flat here and here, so here and here. And then the other one is a video I shot in Taiwan in a night market about stinky tofu. So I actually went and bought some stinky tofu and I ate it. All right, let's take my first bite. <laughs> which is one of the most famous night markets in Taiwan. As you can see behind me, there are a lot of food stands. One of the most notorious dishes is stinky tofu. Stinky tofu gets its name from its stink, which is very distinct. Although some people feel that they can't stomach it, <laughs> just think of it as a blue cheese in Taiwan. So these types of videos always make for a lot of fun. Um, and so when, besides that, uh, if you are filming other people, especially if you're interviewing people, um, what you ask is very, very important because we are not really producing stuff for TV and nobody kind of wants to sit through your subject telling the story, their entire life story, if you can summarize it in like a slide or two. So what you want to do is make sure you get a comfortable mid-length shot. Um, and then the questions you ask obviously is super important. So you want to ask them to tell their whole story, even though I just said they don't want to, people don't want to sit through it. Um, just having the whole story just in case later on on in case they say something different or that the way that they word is really good or you're kind of missing a part um, to later on when you're editing for this to make the story make sense you can take bits from it um, but then more importantly you want to make sure that you ask them to react to their circumstances because again people relate to people and social uh, social audiences are really really motivated by the kind of like how people feel and how um, and, and emotions and also the for concrete details like why and like why 
why do they think that happened? And so here are just two examples of um, videos where we've kind of interviewed someone. So the first one um, is, uh, and basically you wanna think of how, what they can say in a way that you can't summarize in, um, in just like title cards, for example. So the first one is uh, a video that I shot when I was back in Taiwan to cover the elections. And I basically interviewed young people and I asked them why they were voting for the current president. Um, and so pay attention to what they have said um, that is different from, you know, what you could summarize from like what, from the clips, sorry, from the clips of the interview that I include versus like what is said in the title cards instead. Taiwan is I would say that Taiwan is a democracy tower in uh, East Asia, and I do believe so. And uh, uh, to see Hong Kong happen, uh, it's really, really important to us to vote for our future. And I really hope that Taiwan could keep the democracy, yeah, because we don't want to be Chinese. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, the people who's, uh, who we've interviewed are speaking a lot about their emotions and their feelings. Um, and so I think that is not something that you would necessarily summarize in, um, that would not be as impactful if you summarized it in a slide and said, young people said this, versus actually seeing someone say it and have it come out of their mouths kind of thing. Um, and then on the right here is an Instagram story that I made for um, when I was at BuzzFeed, when I partnered with Instagram uh, for International Women's Day in 2019. And basically, I reached out to a bunch of cool women and asked who are doing cool stuff in general on Instagram and also just uh, for their communities. And I asked them to film a little bit and tell us a little bit about them and also why they do what they do. Um, so this is an Iranian photographer who uh, went viral for uh, because she wasn't allowed to in a football match and then she stood on a roof and took a photo with a giant uh, zoom, uh, magnifying, sorry, I guess like a giant lens and then like zoomed in really close. Um, but uh, she has since been able to get into uh, football stadiums, but basically she uh, answers kind of the question of who she is, her story, um, and why she does what she does here in this short 15 second video. پریسا پوتایریان هستم از پاس ورزشی ایرانی توی ایران برای عکاسی از فوتبال مشکلاتی برای زن وجود داره ما باید برای رسیدن به هدفی که پوشش داریم تلاش کنیم منم برای رسیدن به چیزی که قلبا حس میکنم درسته تمام تلاش هم میکنم تا بالاخره این را برای ما هم باست. So yeah, through asking these types of questions, you can get answers that are very suitable for video. Um, and then the next step after we have scripted and also filmed ourselves and other people, the, it's to gather B-roll. So this is just alternative footage to kind of illustrate our point. So basically the shots that you should get when you're gathering B-roll is basically video of everything that you reference um, in, your, in your script. Um, and so that includes establishing shots of where you are, such as the street or the building. This is basically like a wide shot that's quite zoomed out that tells people exactly your location. Um, so that kind of like sets the scene and the context. Um, then you want to get like slow pans, kind of like a slowly going like this. Um, but don't go too fast because when you when you go too fast and you try to slow it down, it starts to jiggle. And so just go really slowly um, or zoom in on a object or anything that you're kind of talking about. But again, do that very slowly. Um, and then also getting a nice close up of it so that you know when you're talking about this um, object, you can then show this object. Um, and then you want to get if you're uh, video includes interviews. You want to get footage of your subject not talking. So, you know, you get them to walk you around their neighborhood, show you around their house, just like doing daily things, because um, it helps to not only kind of build up the personality and kind of like of your subject, but also to uh, it's like a change for uh, the viewers so that they don't necessarily have to just keep staring at someone talking the whole time. Um, and so we can kind of get a better idea of, um, you know, them and how they interact with their surroundings. Um, and then also some 
screenshots of you if you are uh, going with other people it always helps to just have some of like yeah, no, no, you walking into a building um you and uh, approaching the subject um these can all kind of help later on when you're putting together a video um to kind of like thread things together kind of you going on this journey of filming this video um you don't necessarily need to use it but it's always good to just shoot more um, and have that later instead of shooting not enough and then regretting and being like, oh no, now I have to reuse a clip. And so here is a quick, uh, this is the introduction to a very a lot longer video that I shot um, in Japan. Uh, basically I went and interviewed the last girls of the Ganguro subculture. Um, it's more of like a mini documentary style, but I think this kind of introduction clip kind of illustrates a lot of the examples that I'm talking about, such as the establishing shots so you kind of see where in Japan, um, we've got some slow pans and zooms of, um, I guess, it, not as much in the beginning, but of showing kind of the stuff that they're talking about. We've also got the subjects who I will interview later in the video, not talking, and also some shots of me. Um, and so I'm just going to play that quickly, and you can watch the entire video on YouTube if you're interested. <laughs> So we're in the back of a taxi in Tokyo on the way to Shibuya, which is the capital of Ganger culture. Right, so um, as you can see, we've got some establishing shots showing Tokyo where we are. Um, we've got some slow pans and zooms. Um, we've got subjects not talking and also shots of me. Um, cool. So after you have done that, um, after you have scripted, you have gathered footage of you, you've gathered footage of your in, uh, your interviewees, um, and you've also gathered a bunch of um, B-roll, it's time to put it all together through editing. And so I wanna show, I'm gonna focus mostly on editing on your mobile. Um, so I'm just gonna show two examples of stuff that um, I edited on my phone, um, just to kind of show what's possible. Um, so the first one is a video that I made for Amnesty. And then the second one is again for International Women's Day, um, um, for Instagram uh, uh, 2019, which is two years ago now. Um, oh, was it three? Um, anyway, so yeah, here we go. This is the first one is a reel, and then the second one is a story. that is to promote the Human Rights Academy uh, app. And then here we have Greta. For me, International Women's Day means that we remember our history and the struggle of women. And also that we acknowledge the fact that nowhere in the world today, women are equal to men and that we still have a long way to equality. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about editing on your phone. So one of the things that I stress all the time is to make sure that you subtitle because not only are most people or well not, I don't know if it's most, but a lot of people on their phones not using and don't have the sound on except for when they're going on TikTok and then TikTok turns the sound on. Um, but it's also really good for accessibility reasons. Um, so just make sure that no matter, even if you don't necessarily subtitle word for word, what is being said, you at least have a summary of um, what is being said so that people can read and understand what is going what is being said or going on in the video um, so when you're editing it's really important so once to make sure that the visuals match the text so um, I think we can watch the first video which is a TikTok that I made for water aid kind of to demonstrate how um, when you're putting basically what you do is you put your script in and you say okay here I'm going to talk about this then you need to think about okay how can I what is something that illustrates what is a visual that illustrates the thing that I am talking about and then have that come up at the same time as the text. So let's watch this TikTok video and hopefully that'll give you a clearer idea of what that means in terms of what I'm saying. Make sure the visuals match the text. Basically, you don't want things to be like, um, you're talking about one thing and then the video shows something else. A spacecraft head to Mars searching for water and paving the way for future human exploration, one in 10 people are still searching for clean water on Earth.
Now, thanks to a simple network of pipes that channels water to the village, can tell you water whenever she needs it. That's why our mission is here on Earth, providing clean and safe water to people that can tell you where it's urgently needed. It's not rocket science, but it's giving people the chance to change their future. So as you can see in this video, when we're talking about Tantelli, we've got a photo to show Tantelli. Um, when we're talking about her living in a remote village, we're showing the remote village. We're talking about her making a difficult journey to get water every day. We're actually showing that journey. And so that is why at the beginning, I kept stressing, you know, it's really important that you script first, because if you script, or at least you have a rough idea of what your video is going to look like, then you know what footage you need to gather to match up with the text. Um, basically, the more that you can cover yourself up, um, especially when it comes to not TikTok videos, um, the better, because people don't want to stare at the same person talking nonstop for so long. So the more that you can kind of show the things that you're talking about, the better it is, and the less text you can have, the better. So um, gather the footage. Um, basically based on the, that advice. Um, and then so when you're filming as well, um, make sure that you, if you're filming on your phone to film with the built-in camera app, unless you um, need to use TikTok or Instagram Reels for um, like a filter or a feature, just because it, it comes out as a better quality in general. And then you can upload that onto TikTok um, and then you can edit it using kind of Instagram or TikTok's tools, um, like the built-in features to add text. Um, and then you can, again, like play around with gifts and color um, as we spoke about earlier, because because you were shooting kind of zoomed out, there is enough room for you to kind of put a lot of other stuff around it, including like captions and also, um, you know, just like stickers and GIFs. And also one tip that I found really helps is to remember to keep saving as you go. So maybe after one slide um, or like one title, you save it um, and then you do the next title and then you save it because um, maybe later on you go back and you realize you made a typo, but it's too late to like edit um, anything after that. So just make sure that you keep saving as you go. It's annoying because you end up with like multiple versions in your phone, but it, it will be better for you in the long run. So here is another video from um, the Q&A about Taiwan's election. Um, and so as you can see here, I have not subtitled it um, exactly, but um, it does kind of show an overview of everything that I'm talking about in this video. 57% of people in Taiwan aged between 20 and 29 said they would vote for Tai, according to opinion polls. Some young people that Bloomberg Quick Take spoke to said they voted for her because they wanted to preserve Taiwan's democracy and didn't want it to fall under China's control like Hong Kong. Awesome. And so on that note, that is the end of the presentation, but I just want to say like, don't forget to experiment just because um, a lot of the videos that I've shown were just kind of experiments or had bits of experiments where um, we basically were like, let's try this one thing and see if that's going to work because, you know, we've never seen this before or like we saw someone do it for like something else. Um, maybe I can also try that for news or for human rights or for something else that um, I'm interested in. And then kind of taking um, that and testing it out and then looking at the data and then you can kind of be like, oh, okay, I didn't expect that to do so well. Uh, maybe I can do it again. Or, you know, you try something and it completely flops, but that's okay because, you know, that in itself is also a lesson and you can say, okay, I wonder why that didn't work. Is there something else that um, I can do to make it better next time? Or is it because of this? Can I change that? Does that, it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't cover the story. It might just mean that, you know, the way that you presented it is not necessarily the best way or the way that audiences want to engage with it. Um, and so, yeah, on that note, thank you so much. Um, I am open to questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Cassie. That was so rich. That was a lot of information. Um, and we got, we've got we gotten a lot of questions throughout, some of which you've already answered <laughs> during your presentation. Right. <laughs> uh, so, so these ones we won't mention. Um, but for example, uh, there was a question about when uh, choosing people from your from organization and from from the group you you are filming, how to recognize who in in the organization would be a good speaker, and that sort of relates also to a question: What are the skills you would say are uh, to be trained for being good in front of a camera? Like what and how to practice? Yeah. Um, so I used to be really, really bad on camera and I think I still sometimes am because I just sometimes put on this like I'm presenting voice, I need to talk like a, a certain way, but I think a lot of it is like practice um, and then just kind of understanding, I guess one of the things that I, I was taught that I found really, really helpful is to think envision in your head the person that you're trying to tell this to. So for example, if I'm trying to tell this to my friend, maybe I, I picture like my friend and then I 
pretend like I'm saying it to her. Um, that really helps with like tone and stuff because your tone completely changes because you're not so conscious that you are on camera. Um, and then I think it's just really important to kind of practice a lot. Um, so sometimes it helps to kind of write down your thoughts and then kind of have a rough idea of what you're going to say because if you're trying also trying to remember your lines and also trying to like watch what you're doing with your hands or doing something like tripping up while also tripping up over your words um it helps to kind of have at least like develop a rough idea of what you want to say so that you can focus on kind of controlling other aspects because video is more than just like you know your voice for a podcast for example you can just focus on your voice you have to think a lot about like oh how does my hair look am i doing something funny with my hands is it distracting um all those sorts of things um I think some people do take a bit of time to uh, warm up to the camera because people are in general, when you get a camera put in front of you, you just suddenly tense up and you become a different person. So what we found really helps is like um, having someone else there uh, stand next to the camera and be like, talk to this person. Um, and that really, really changes how some people feel because they sometimes then end up almost forgetting that the camera is there and then having that person actually be listening and be like, yes, and like engaging with them silently, obviously, because you don't want any background noise. Maybe they're nodding in agreement or just actually paying attention to what they say. And that really, really helps. Um, and then sometimes uh, one of the things that I found really helps is kind of like when you're filming people, you can obviously have them say their lines and stuff, but then you can also again be like, hey, can you tell me that all just like in your own words? And sometimes that's when they, when you force people to sing like scripted lines, they become stiffer. It really depends on the person and you have to kind of like, work with them to figure out what's best. But um, one of the reporters, for example, I work with, she, she can read your lines and it's fine. But if you get her to tell you the stories herself in her own words, it's so much better. And then, so make sure that you're also recording that and just be like, hey, tell me, now tell me the whole story yourself. And then you can take chunks, take and pick what you think would be best. Right, 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 right. Um, there's a popular question uh, that Rida asked, uh, but Katarina is also wondering about, Besides uh, Instagram and TikTok tools that you use for editing um, and filming, uh, do you use other programs uh, on your PC or on your phone? Yeah, um, so I think if you're focusing on making, actually, I, I do encourage, actually, I think maybe I'm old school because I'm not you know, a teen on TikTok. So I do prefer editing on my computer, at least putting like the structure together on my computer. So I use Adobe Premiere, which is a paid service. Um, but there are, you can also use Final Cut Pro, uh, which is also a paid service, but there are actually some free uh, kind of like browser editors you can use. So uh, one of them is called Capwing, which is free. And I think it, it's pretty good. It does the job. Um, so you can like upload stuff on there. You can make subtitles. I can drop that in the text, uh, the chat box after. Um, and you can add subtitles. You can put clips together in order and then you can export it. And then, you know, if you want to, you can send it to your phone. Um, there's also an app on your phone called CapCut, which I think is like, similar to uh, Capwing, but for phones. Um, I haven't actually tried it myself, but I've heard good things. So yeah, I think um, sometimes it's easier to edit stuff outside of TikTok and or Instagram because um, sometimes they're, they, I don't think the editing tools are super friendly. Like if you fail to save a version, then like, um, you know, you have to like redo the whole thing, which has definitely happened to me recently when I made a video and then my I was halfway through, then my phone died and I had to redo the whole thing. Um, so yeah, just uh, make sure that, you know, give those things a try. Um, and if anyone has any other kind of resources, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Yes, and speaking, uh, yes, because Christoph was asking to uh, uh, to name all the apps, we will put them in the email that you'll get tomorrow with the link to the, the recording. So it will all be there. But uh, as Cassie said, if anybody knows any uh, any other ones that they use and that they think they're good, it would be amazing to, to share them as well. Um, but speaking of uh, uh, TikTok, uh, Nihao me, me asked, uh, what are your top three do's and don'ts when it comes to recording things on TikTok? Um, I think my number one thing is like, not everything needs to be a dance challenge. Um, I think a lot of organizations tend to feel that, you know, because everyone's doing dance challenges on TikTok, everything has to also be a dance challenge. And sometimes, you know, there are people dying. It doesn't necessarily warrant itself for that. Um, I think people focus storytelling is really important. So having someone having a face there is really important. A lot of the videos that do the best on TikTok feature people. And so 
um, it's also a good person, I guess, like, and then related to that, having a bit of personality, um, kind of putting a face behind an account really, really helps versus like, we are this nameless organization that is going to tell you about the world now kind of thing. So having someone um, on camera really, really helps and having kind of a bit of a personality as well, I think really is good because people don't want to necessarily feel like they're watching the same content by everybody all the time. Right, 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 right. And don't? Oh, don't. Um, yeah, no, no dance challenges if you don't, <laughs> if it's the main one. Um, what else? Uh, don't forget to subtitle, closed captions. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I guess like speaking kind of more big picture, it's important to keep in mind that like all of the videos that you post on your account are kind of cohesive and fall under the same. This goes for like all social media platforms actually kind of all kind of fall under the same mission or kind of the same brand or you know your identity because sometimes people get very confused when they suddenly see something that on an account they thought was posting about I don't know water for example and they suddenly see something totally unrelated and then that really like turns people off so I think it's really important to make sure that each one of your videos you really think about and say okay how is does this what does this serve my audience does this fall under my mission um, if, if not, then maybe I shouldn't necessarily post it on there. So don't necessarily, and also like that also goes for like, if you make a video for YouTube and you try to just like throw it up on TikTok without really thinking about, you know, what works on TikTok and what doesn't work on TikTok, um, people are going to be really turned off by that as well. Um, and yeah, just like spend time, another do is to like just spend time on the platform and actually look at how people are using it versus trying to because I think you don't necessarily have to adopt the ways that they do things on there, but exactly, but you can take, think about like the features, like, okay, lots of people focus storytelling. So I can also use that. There's like, if you use lots, lots of use a green screen, how can I use that in my own context without necessarily kind of creating something that may be a little bit cringeworthy, for example. Right. A little bit speaking of that, meaning staying true to your message, staying true to your, uh, sort of the feel of your organization, whether that's your organization or your cause. Anya had a, had a question that, uh, observation and a question that many of your posts follow a certain format. Do you keep it consistent on purpose or is it something that you just ended up, hap that, that's something that just ended up happening? Uh, and a super small follow-up to that, very technical, should we put watermarks or use a logo intro in the um, videos? So first of all, your sure. style and then the logo. Yeah. Um, so the style is something that uh, I kind of experimented with a lot and then um, ended up kind of figuring out that was what worked best for um, what I was trying to do for like the stories I was trying to tell. So I've kind of stuck to that. Um, and now it's kind of like a kind of like a hallmark of, you know, when you come to my accounts, you know, that this is the type of thing that you're going to get. But yeah, I think you can kind of experiment, especially when you're just starting out. It's always good to just like experiment with a bunch of stuff. Test out a few theories, like I want to put my text here, I want to put my text there, I want to do it this color, I want to do it that color. And then just look at the numbers and see what works. And then once you reach a point, and you'll know when you reach this point where it's like, oh, this is working, then it's time to kind of like look back amongst the trends and be like, okay, people tend to like this and this and this. So let me just like zone in on this and then just like continue to do it that way. Um, and then it, it's also useful because like later on when you got to think about like when you're reaching new users. So when someone who doesn't necessarily follow you comes to your page, um, they're going to probably scroll, look at your bio and then they'll read, sorry, they'll look at your photo and then they'll read your bio and then they'll scroll down and look at some posts. So if they can get like a kind of like a clear idea of like the types of content that um, you're going to, they're going to get, then yeah, they're probably, and if they like it, then they're probably going to follow you. Um, but like a lot of accounts, I wouldn't say that like, it really depends on your organization and your brand as well. And I, cause I know there's probably some kind of individual creators here. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to stick to a certain type of um, style or template. Uh, so a lot of people kind of aggregate content from everywhere, but it's kind of the, the, con the, the content itself that kind of brings the profile together cohesively. Um, as to watermarks, um, I have kept watermarks just in general for, at first I didn't have them and then suddenly um, stuff started going viral and people were reposting without permission and so I was kind of like, oh, it's, I don't want it to be kind of overpowering and I think I've had a lot of these conversations with organizations I've worked for where it's like, how do we, because a lot of places tend to have really giant logos, which then like kind of 
tend to steal the limelight away from the actual story. So I think you can have watermarks, you can not have watermarks, it's really up to you. Just be conscious that, you know, if you have a really cool video, someone may repost it without permission. So it's up to you whether you want to have that watermark on there. And um, especially if you're an organization or something like that. Um, you can also have it as like a small thing as well. I think that's really important where you don't want it to kind of overtake the, overpower the content because people are not watching this video for your logo, but they're kind of watching for the content. So it's just kind of about like kind of striking that balance, I guess. Right. I uh, have, uh, because we just have one more minute left and we want to end on time. I just have one question uh, based very much on my own personal um, fears and worries, I would say, but maybe this resonates with, uh, with someone else because Cassie, obviously, you're a professional at this, like you've done this for, for a long time. Um, and I feel that uh, there's a there's a fear or like for a lot of us activists or people from in the organizations, the worst part is just like to start, right? Like to start doing it because not everybody is a native, like another way is, is a digital native. So it does take some, some getting used to. So is there, I know that there's not a like an answer that it takes, I don't know, five months or something, but mm -hmm. how do you remember how, how you started? Like what were the biggest challenges there and how long it took you by trial? Because you said that you have to see other videos, you have to try and stuff, uh, try stuff yourself, see what works, what doesn't. Um, how long that conversion is, meaning like how long does it take to, to get to get comfortable with the with the, with doing videos? Um, I think starting is always the hardest part. I basically had to be shoved into it. Um, so maybe you just want someone to shove you into it. Um, but then after that, I think it gets a lot easier getting over that initial fear, I think really helps because you realize maybe it's not as bad as you think, or maybe it's worse. Um, but then you end up kind of practicing. And I think that's easy, helpful and easy for people to do. You can just kind of pick up your phone and start talking to it, start filming yourself, practice something. Um, and so I think it does take some time, but I guess it really depends on the person. Like some, some things you may pick up like immediately where it's like, oh, I'm actually really good at you know, presenting on camera, but I'm not so great at like, I don't know, filming, uh, holding a camera still for very long. And so these are just things that, you know, you don't, you wouldn't know what you're good at until you actually do it. So I think you should just go out there and try it, um, try a bunch of stuff, film yourself, film other people, film stuff going on around you. Um, and then you'll discover what you like and what's good and what you need to work on. And then you can work on those things. And um, it's never really that scary. And everyone has phones these days. It's not, not that hard to just pick up a phone and hit record and see what happens. Wonderful. Yeah, I think uh, just pick up, like, try stuff and see how it works is, is something that, uh, an advice that we can all follow. Um, Cassie, thank you so, so much. Uh, this was amazing. This was so informative. Um, thank you to everyone to, who participated. Thank you for all your great questions. And hopefully we'll see some of your uh, video content uh, um, online. Um, but thank you again. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you to the participants. Please follow, um, uh, join us for the two remaining uh, uh, webinars in our series and follow Tech Soup Europe and HiveMind for more details. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.